Welcome everybody to Happy Valley. Here we are a civilized town, so there's no need for any electronic devices or cell phones, as we have the whole thing filmed for your enjoyment. So, um, welcome to the show. Sit back and enjoy the show. <laughs> Spratt, Jack Spratt, private detective, investigator, gumshoe, private eye, whatever you call me, I'm the best in town. This town sure needs the best, you know, they used to call this place paradise. Not anymore, there's crime around every corner of the streets. Aren't safe. So welcome to my story, it's going to be a thriller. And it starts, as all good stories should, once upon a crime. <laughs> Let's go through it slowly. 
Starting at the top, what do we got? <laughs> well, I find that hard to swallow. What else? <laughs> I knew something didn't fit. Keep going. Can you put your finger on it? <laughs> no, I didn't like the sound of that at all. What courts were involved? Federer and Wimbledon? Quite a racket trying to conceal their game. Think you missed something? Hit me with it. Come on, that's old news, a swing and a miss. There's still something fishy at the bottom of this case. Holy mackerel, that's it. Good work, Chief. Can I put it all back now? Goldilocks, this young dame certainly knew how to make an entrance. To be frank, I was a little shocked and surprised to see her. You seem a little shocked and surprised to see me. She was receptive. I wasn't expecting any visitors at this time day. Certainly not a young dame like Goldie. It was past her bedtime, but from the look of her, she wasn't ready for sleep. She seemed worried and desperate. I'm worried. Please, I'm desperate, Mr. Spratt. Calm down, Miss Locks. Tell me, what brings you to my office at this time of night? Couldn't you sleep? How can anyone sleep at the moment? Everything's going wrong, no one's safe, and I need your help. You're my only hope. I had half a mind to tell her to run along home, but something about this dame had me curious. Perhaps she knew something important. I had to find out. Excuse me, Mr. Spratt, but who are you talking to? I'm not talking to anyone, Miss Locks. This young dame didn't miss a trick. There, you did it again. You keep talking to that wall. Don't change the subject, Miss Locks. Well, what do we... Oh, well, why don't you run me through it? So, what's the story? Well, I suppose it all began yesterday morning at the dairy. <laughs> Some fresh milk for a sheep, please, Mother Hubbard. Some fresh milk for 
for Lil Bo Peep. So fresh milk for Lil Bo Peep. <laughs> Thank you. 
top ten rises for pig napping, but the top story of today is porridge. Yes, Papa Bear and his delightful family have awoken from hibernation once again, and this morning we'll be reopening their ever-popular five-star restaurant, the Porridge Pot. To tell us more, our roving reporters have gone down there to see what's cooking. Wing, puddles? Yes, thanks, Rusty. Well, we're here at the Porridge Pot Diner where there's a real buzz of excitement as we await Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Junior Bear. Joining us right now are the talented servers of the Porridge Pot. Hi there, team. Good morning, Nursery News! <laughs> it must be great opening up again after the long winter. It sure is awesome, right? Just can't wait to get started. And tell me, what's it like to work for such a famous family as the Bear? Oh, the Porridge Pot is like one big happy family. And tell us, what's in store for your customers this season? Just the usual grand, delicious porridge. 100% customizable, so just the way you like it. Well, that's just wonderful. Well, folks, we'll have to leave it there, because I think the bears are arriving. <laughs>
Wow, you're so clever, Junior. I reckon you'll make a brilliant inventor one day. Do you really think so? That would be great, but, well, it's just that Mom and Dad want me to join the family business. They want me to stay here in London because I'm older, but I'm not a business bear. I want to go off and invent things. I don't want to be stuck here for the rest of my life. And I don't even like porridge. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's more fun than being stuck at the dairy every day, cleaning up after Marigold. But you get unlimited milkshakes. I guess the job does have its perks. <laughs> Whatever it was you're doing to bring you a new splash. This morning, Paul Bear announced his plan to go global with his porridge. We're going back live to the porridge pot to find out more. Dwayne Pike and Puddles are there right now, and they've talked with Papa Bear and his family. Any more news? Thanks, Rusty. Well, let's find out. We're here with the Bear family. Papa Bear, can you tell us more about your plan to go global? Well, as one of this little diner, I felt it was selfish to keep the porridge for ourselves and our friends. I want to bring happiness around the globe and bring a smile to every face with our humble food. But rest assured, the folk of Howard Valley will always be our top priority. After all, we are the bears that care. <laughs> well, that's just wonderful. Mama Bear, can you tell us exactly what goes into your porridge that makes it so lip-smackingly delicious? Now, Dwayne, you cheeky thing. You know me very well, I can't tell you that. It's a secret recipe that's been in our family for generations. It just warms the soft pan in my heart to know that our simple food brings pleasure to the lives of our many friends here in Happy Valley. And she means that most sincerely, folks. <laughs> and what about you, Junior? Looking forward to following your father's paw steps and running the porch pot diner one day? Well, not exactly. You see, I really want to- Of course he is, aren't you, sir? Actually, I thought he'd be- He can't wait till he's the big boss there. You see, I don't really want to- And when that day comes, we'll be happy to know the places and save paws. Well, that's just wonderful. Well, folks, this is Nursery News, reminding you if you're wanting to put some yummy in your tummy, there's just one place you can go. The Porridge Pot! Imagine, porridge pot diamonds 
companies. I will mask your measly, kill cornflakes, and wipe out Wheaties. He's a serial killer. <laughs>
frosty morning at the mulberry bush. Happy Valley had become a gang of thieves overnight. Seems that Tom Tom the Piper's son and a gang of other friendly folk were just plain bad. But I didn't buy it. Something stank worse than a rancid bowl of curds and whey. And I knew if I watched and waited, I'd soon get to the bottom of things.
don't want to be anything like my father. Junior, what's wrong with you this evening? You're being a very grizzly bear. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. It's just that, well, I found out something today. Something really terrible. And I just don't know how to tell you. Oh, Junior, you're not lactose intolerant. <laughs> no, Mom. You see, I was having a walk in the forest this afternoon. Well, that's lovely, dear, but it's getting late, so don't be long. You know what your father's like. Yes, I know what he's like. Oh, how can I tell him what Dad's been up to? And how do I tell Dad I think he's wrong? I don't want to be part of a family business. I want to be an inventor. Oh, well, Junior, this just looks like another dream that will ever come to me. <coughs>
Great idea, son. And when you join the family business, great ideas will be exactly what we need. One suitcase full of stolen recipes and secret plans. I hope this works! <laughs>
getting what he deserves. And Mother Hubbard crying because Marigold came back. Mr. Bear, I've heard enough. Arrest him, boys. Looks like this story is a happy ending at last. And of course, how long do you spend it? After all, it really is a happy ever after kind of place.
Josh Drummond, I was director this year. Carl Hollinger, backstage. And I'm Marcus Susick, and I'm the technical theater coordinator. And I'm Cassie Murray, and I'm the of